I'm going to start off the series here next week or so and release some videos talking about, you know, we're talking about black powder guns and getting into black powder guns uh, because of the recent crisis with guns and ammo, kind of trying to take a break and go out and shoot something to where it's not costing, you know, like I guess nine millimeters going for a dollar a round now or, you know, with the cost of components you know, buying primers at $130 a thousand and $100 a pound for gunpowder, you will end up having $5 cartridges. So, always in these times, I always thought I'd take a break, get in a, dig out my black powder guns and shoot them. And even that's <clears throat> at a disadvantage. Cap and ball revolvers are sold out everywhere. You can't get caps and black powder is hard to find. So, but anyway, I figured I'd press on, plus the weather's horrible and I can't get out and do any casting or shooting anyway, so I'm going to make some videos and we're going to cover things uh, revolving around the black powder pistols from the Civil War, but a lot of the content and the techniques will be helpful with any type of replica black powder firearm. So what I'm going to cover in this series, kind of go over, first of all, is powder handling, handling black powder. Talk about that a little bit. And I don't use black powder substitute, but, you know, and I know a lot of people do because you can go to the store and you can still find it. That's the only powder on the shelf. But I've never used it. Uh, I don't want to get into using it. I like using the black powder, kind of keeping it original. That's my feeling on it. And I know for some people it's a pain, but I will glance over it. But any questions pertaining to uh, substitutes, I, I don't use them, okay? So powder handling is uh, the first thing. Then we're going to go into um, how you can create something to pre- charge or get pre-measured loads for your gun. We'll start off with something simple and use a very inexpensive technique or method to weigh out the powder charges like on a day like today when it's raining you can sit down weigh out your charges and put them in a reusable container of some sort and I'll give you some suggestions and there are a lot of different ideas and people do different things but you can very easily do it uh, you know, pre-measure your powder, and then that way when you go to the range, it, it can go with a revolver. With a revolver, it's easy because you're loading six at a time. So this is a time saver, but you can do it even with uh, a rifle, a single shot rifle. And there are several commercial things, you know, that they make for hunters that you put in a container, your pre-measured charge, and that one out in the field. We'll cover that, and we'll cover some ideas on some simple things there. Then we're going to go into, well, if that's a good idea, let's get historically accurate and correct and make an actual combustible cartridge. Okay, in other words, roll a little paper tube, put some powder in there, and then seal it all up, and then you got a little cartridge like they had back in the old days to load. Um, and that has so many different ways of doing it, and there's so many videos out there. I'm going to attempt it with a just a round ball. There's a way of doing it with just putting a round ball on there. And there's a way of doing it with a conical bullet to actually kind of replicate what they had uh, back in the old days. That was how technology was changing from the old round ball to a paper cartridge with a conical bullet. See, this is where we're studying firearms history and the technological development as we go. Okay, so once we get into where we start making the paper cartridges, this is where a whole bunch of videos are going to come up. I'll go over books like this and instructions, how you can make the tools to do this. You need some very basic, simple tools to form the cartridges. You can buy pre-made stuff. Okay, where in other words, where the guy gives you instruction sheet, there's a video out there, you can make the cartridges with a pre-made tool. They're all fairly simple uh, things to do. 
So once we start making the cartridges or the paper tubes, you have to have the correct bullet. And like I said, you could either put just a round ball on it, or you have to have a kind of a specialized conical bullet. And there are bullet molds, there are custom bullet molds that have been made, and I'll make a thing about the bullet mold and the company that does it that are exact replicas of with a guy that collected the bullets, they're exact duplicates of what was produced back during the Civil War. Exactly. And then you can make a period correct, historically correct paper cartridge with the correct bullet. But, not only do we have to get into specialized mold and all this other stuff and cast some bullets, but now we have to go and these replica firearms uh, here, like this one, they're very close copies, but they're not exact copies. And the Italians on some of them, this one looks like it'll work. And this is an older gun, but some of the older guns and some of the others may not have an area where these bullets will fit, so we'll have to get into firearms modification. Okay? And that will vary. It's going to be all over the place, but we'll look at that also. Modifying your gun to get these period correct things to work. And then there is always things like the accessories, like these little cartridge boxes and other things to discuss. Um, so there's going to be a whole series of stuff and I'll try to keep the video short. Uh, that seems to help and I get more views and uh, try to go in some sort of order because uh, I'm going to try to get some stuff done this weekend and build up because when I get my dental work done, I probably won't be able to talk for a while, at least a few days and, or more. So I won't be making any videos. So um, I'll release these like a day at a time and you guys can keep up with them. I know a lot of you fellas really ain't into this black powder. A lot of you are into the more modern mill surplus, but it's just how I keep busy and keep going you know, making some sort of content. Alright, so stay tuned, and I'll get to work on this here in the next few days, and there will be some interesting videos coming on up.